you know, constantly tasting. The lamb was extremely overdone. The gastric didn't end up on the plate. They had a razzmatazz attitude. Every aspect of it worked. I was really disappointed, actually, by the two teams. Welcome to the season finale of Battle of the Chefs. Previously on Battle of the Chefs, the Buffaloes went head-to-head -head with the Panthers in the semi-finals. Both teams went on their shopping challenge at the Bridge Spa. I'm very pleasantly surprised. Um, it's well seasoned and um, it's very, very tasty. I'm, I'm very surprised. And after all was cooked and tasted, the Buffaloes took the win. Welcome back to the Battle of the Chefs, right here in Harare. We started off with 16 teams and now we're down to just two. The Ants and the Buffaloes. In the semi-finals, the Ants beat the Crocs and the Buffaloes beat the Panthers. Today, they will have 35 minutes to prepare a starter for four people. Your 35 minutes starts now. The final battle has begun. One of our passions is fusion food. So we've decided to fuse some Ethiopian and some Indian and do a vegetarian. I think uh, most of the time people ignore the vegetarians. So we thought, why not do a vegetarian starter for the vegetarians out there? Oh, that's different. So what we're doing is a vegetarian spicy pancake or crepe that is filled with cauliflower and uh, potatoes. And on the bottom is a shiro sauce, which is basically an Ethiopian sauce that they do with spiced chickpea flour. And on top, we're going to do crispy okra, uh, just for the crunch and some texture in the dish. And a mango chap. And a bit of uh, mint yogurt. To cool down the heat. Mango adding color and the sweetness? Yes. yes. Sounds incredible. We're doing prawn stuffed uh, scallops where we will be poaching the actual scallop. Uh, we'll be taking the flesh out of the prawns, chopping them up finely, stuffing the scallop shell, baking it and then we'll, we'll poach the scallops in a bit of white wine and then we'll add them, put them on top and they'll have a nice parmesan crisp on the side with a pea aioli. And sounding very confident and rightfully so, it sounds like a promising dish. The ants have been a strong team from Heat One and demonstrate strong teamwork and a solid understanding of flavours. Both Tony and Ant run their own restaurants and so demand very high standards of themselves. The Buffaloes are also an incredibly formidable team with a knack for marrying unlikely flavour combinations beautifully. Musodzi and Taf both share a passion for fusion food and are not afraid to think outside the box. It's truly exciting to see such talent in both teams battle it out in the kitchen. Taf chops up some onions and garlic to toss in the pan. This is the first time during the season that a team has prepared a purely vegetarian dish for their starter. Meanwhile, in the blue kitchen, Tony prepares and beats the egg yolks for his pea aioli, which is a garlic mayonnaise made with egg yolk, olive oil, garlic and peas. It makes for a wonderful accompaniment for prawns and scallops. Peas can come up, right? The pea aioli, um, we will um, blanch the peas and then we'll chill them and then we'll uh, blend them and we'll add them sl also slowly into the, the, um, the aioli and with a bit of garlic. What's an also very important is that you, once you've uh, blanched the peas, you put them into cold, cold water to keep the colour. Very correct, and in the red kitchen, Musotsi prepares her mango chutney. Lots of aromatic Indian spices going in there. Yeah. 
was our oven. It's coming a lot. And finally chopping the prawns for their scallop stuffing. I imagine ginger and mango make a great combination. Taff has thinly sliced the okra and is coating it in chickpea flour in preparation for frying. A lot of vigour there as Ant grates the zest off that lemon. So much chopping, mixing, sweating and hard work happening in the kitchen today. This is the final of course. Tony is working on that pea aioli. Another mixing bowl, Tony. Pardon? Another mixing bowl. Ant goes ahead and helps himself to a mixing bowl from the red team's cooking station. The gloves are certainly off. 22 minutes to go. 22 minutes to go. I'll put that on now and you finish this guy. Sodzi has chopped the mint for their minted yogurt to accompany their Ethiopian Indian vegetarian fusion dish. teams were given 35 minutes to prepare a starter with ingredients of their choice. The red buffaloes decided to prepare a vegetarian dish, whilst the blue ants went with a seafood dish. Now, with about 10 minutes left on the clock, both teams enter the final stages of their dishes. Musodzi has prepared the batter for the spicy crepes which will then be stuffed with a spicy potato and cauliflower filling that has been prepared by Funky Taff. Oops, small accident there as Tony tries to get the pea aioli into the squeeze bottle in preparation for plating. Seven minutes, 45 seconds to go. That's some good looking chutney. Tony prepares the Parmesan crisp, which will no doubt make a good accompaniment to their starter. Parmesan crisp looks good and ready for plating.
the red team is almost done plating. Blue team cutting it incredibly close. Will they make it? One minute. Twenty five seconds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Step away from your plates, please. What a rush. Our judges for today are Sherilyn Conlon, the owner and chef at the Coffee Garden, Innocent Masuku, the executive chef at Rainbow Towers, and Stephen Hyde, the executive chef at Emmanuel's Restaurant. The ants are up first with their prawn stuffed scallop shells topped with white wine poached scallops on a pea aioli with a parmesan crisp. The buffaloes are next with their spicy crepe filled with potato and cauliflower on a bed of coconut shiro sauce and topped with crispy okra and accompanied by a mint yogurt and mango chutney. They've had 35 minutes to prepare their starter. And now they're on to the main course. And they have 45 minutes to present four portions. Red team, blue team, your 45 minutes starts now. What are you preparing for the main course? Traditional beef buffalo wellington uh, with a little twist. It has a little Donald in it. Duck. Duck. Uh, livers and sauteed mushrooms. Donald Duck featuring in the blue team's dish should be interesting. Uh, I mean, course is a play on sadza nyama, which is a Zimbabwean staple. But we're just going to give it a little bit of twist, our own twist, and uh, we're going to see how it goes. So basically, we're going to cook our sadza, and then we're going to stuff it with our sour milk and some roasted uh, peppers here. You're going to stuff your sadza with sour milk and roasted peppers? Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to cook it in, in stock so it gets some flavor, then add some rosemary and some cheese in there for a bit of flavor. Whoa! Okay, so the red team is definitely not afraid to take any chances. This should be interesting. Concern about the time? Um, I am. I'm not so much concerned about the time that the pastry takes, but I'm concerned about the thickness of the fillet and the time that it's going to take to sear and, and then rest and then puff. Um, that's not a lot of time. The rest is no problem, but just that. So we're going to be hopping and skipping and jumping. Okay, as Aunt and Tony prepare to hop, skip, and jump across the kitchen and hop straight into getting that fillet ready. Sodzi is working on their sadza, which they are cooking in some stock to add flavor to it. A very interesting approach to a traditional meal.
One of the most common mistakes made when preparing beef tenderloin is not trimming it properly as it has something called silver skin, which is a thick layer of white, sometimes silvery connective tissue running along its surface. This tough tissue never tenderizes, it's tough to cut and just doesn't taste very good if left on the meat. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Before the break, we saw both teams begin to prepare their final main courses of the season. The Ants in Blue, Tony and Ant, are preparing their duck liver and mushroom beef wellington with roasted cherry tomatoes, a garlic butter bean puree, mustard mashed potato, and a red wine balsamic julie. Are we cooking the livers first? Cook the livers first. Can you use this one? Need it. Need to, wait, can I put it in a container for you? Uh, so why yeah. Are you taking the final? I think we haven't seen our competitors. I think we are doing more. And I think we are expressing ourselves more. Yeah. And I think uh, we are hoping that plays well with the judges and that gives yeah. us a notch up above. We're trying to take a risk in most of our dishes so far. Risky moves indeed as the buffaloes in red prepare their own interpretation of a Zimbabwean staple, Sadza Nenyama. Taf and Musodzi do have a history of taking the road less travelled in their past battles this season. Tong, from a vegetarian starter to a carnivore's delight for their main course. I think that pan may be a tad bit too small, Ant. How are you preparing the duck liver? We're going to saute the duck liver with the, the mushrooms. Finely sliced. A bit of salt, pepper, very simple, and a spot of sherry. Sherry and beef make a magical combination. I'm looking forward to seeing how their dish turns out. Slightly unconventional way to roast those peppers, Musodzi. Whoa, things are firing up in the blue kitchen. Don't forget the sherry. Another small spill. First it was water, now it's oil. Then once it's cooked, we're just gonna get cleaned up and then we're gonna just almost like paste the suds on top. This is quite possibly the most experimental dish of the season. Put 
It'll get packed and it won't stick. We want it to be dry. Eh? Another reminder about the sherry from Tony. They would ideally like to avoid preparing a dry beef Wellington. I don't think we've seen Funky Tap this serious before. Perhaps this is his ultimate game face. Ant is now wrapping the beef in the pastry. When their Wellington is all bundled up, they'll pop it in the oven to finish it off. Oh dear, not enough pastry? Is this going to affect their outcome? now have 30 minutes to go, 30 minutes to go. As Joe keeps both teams hopping, skipping and jumping about the kitchen with consistent time checks, Taf and Musodzi step it up a gear whilst Tony and Ant push to stay ahead of the clock. Right, Tony, you will mash. The ants take a moment to touch base. This is the season finale of Battle of the Chefs. Time is sprinting off and both teams are definitely feeling the heat. Twenty-eight minutes, guys. Communication is everything as Tony and Ant try to stay on the ball. Twenty six minutes to go, guys. Twenty six. And then we're going to put our fillings in our roasted peppers, our bilk tong, line that inside, then roll that up. I and mean, then just maybe chill it for a bit, proportion it, then cram it, and then deep fry. I can't even begin to imagine what sour milk stuffed sadza, cooked in stock, crumbed and deep fried, tastes like. I reckon these tomatoes are done, eh? 
just take them out and just heat them up quickly. Twenty-one minutes, guys. Twenty-one minutes to go. How do we know when that's going to be? Well, when the thing is crisp, it's going to be red. It's going to be red. The energy is tense in the blue kitchen. Are they struggling under the pressure? Oh no, Tony, watch out! That could cause a problem with time running out. Keep pushing, guys. Still quite a lot here. Um. Okay, I don't really know what this is meant to look like, but it looks a little untidy to me. As Taff calmly explains their unorthodox processes to a very interested Joe, the blue team is all but calm as they try to recover from their small accident. 17 minutes guys, 17 minutes to go. goes the crumb sadza into the hot oil. There's lots of nice residue here. I put that in here. Yeah, like a lot of change. Yeah, it's yummy. So, grab that, put it on the fire, and put that in. No, that's good. Yeah, and then we'll strain it now. Hope that's a good move. Just fire that. Fire that. Honest. Warm this up to the hour. Warm this up. Then go and warm that. Let's do that. I must say, I am impressed with the blue team's teamwork and coordination, even in light of the pressure. Good. We've got 10 minutes left, right? Yeah. I'll just put it the buffalo's dish is coming together nicely now. That Wellington is looking really good from here. Looks like.
like it meets approval from both team members. Okay, now we've got five minutes, so let's go. Let's play it up, Tony. Five minutes, 30 seconds. Nice. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Ant is trying to slice their Wellington, but the pastry is refusing to comply. Oh dear. Two minutes. Less than two minutes to go and both teams are literally racing to finish plating. Thirty six seconds to go. Twenty five seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, and step away from your plates. The red team now presents Sada Nenyama, deep fried cornmeal cake stuffed with hordzeko and roasted peppers served with fillet of beef, pumpkin leaves with bone marrow, red wine, cinnamon, and butternut kernels. Main course done. How do you think you did? Uh, okay, you can go. <laughs> well, I think we actually really captured our flavors in the main course. We really went out there. We know the flavors came out, and uh, part of being a chef is to improvise. So I think whenever we've had a hiccup, we've improvised and we've been able to bring something to the plate. You brought something to the plate? I don't think it looked good. Yes, it didn't look good. Uh, I think uh, presentation wise, it was a bit lacking, but I would rather a tasty dish than a good-looking dish. Any day. I agree. The blue team now presents their duck liver and mushroom beef wellington with roasted cherry tomatoes, a garlic buttered bean curry, mustard mashed potato, and a red wine balsamic julie. Welcome back to the dessert round of the final of the Battle of the Chefs right here in Harare. The buffaloes and the ants will both have 45 minutes to complete four portions of dessert. Red team, blue team, your 45 minutes starts now. And they're off, the final chance to score some points to win the final. We are making an uh, individual pear and rum tata ten with the uh, avocado ice cream, uh, berry coolie, and uh, some sugar, spun sugar. Mmm, yum! Avocado ice cream is again different. We're also gonna core the the pear. We're gonna peel it first, then core it.
For our eggless avocado ice cream, we are going to pit and core avocados together with the milk, sugar, lemon juice. We are going to blend that all together, whisk in the cream, and then just put it in our ice cream maker. Where we've cored the pear, we're going to insert star anise in there. Then we're going to roll out our puff pastry. We're going to cover the pear with the puff pastry. Just take off the excess pastry. Our first process will be greasing the ramekin containers and lightly sugaring them. Melting our linden chocolate in a water bath, followed by adding our, our two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of sugar into a bowl where we're going to mix and cream the mixture together. Once that's mixed for about a minute and creamed without any lumps, we're going to add our three eggs there, mix that as well, topping in our two tablespoons of flour, mix that to a nice cake consistency and then from there we're going to bake it. A dash of vanilla into the avocado ice cream mixture. So, so those are going in? In the fridge. In the fridge. Two And how long will they be in the fridge for? Just for like a couple of minutes to rest them. Right, 36 minutes to go. For the sponge sugar, you get your sugar and you dissolve it with your water. Then you bring it to a boil until it caramelizes. And then you just take it off the heat and then you get your fork and you just play around with it and just spin your sugar. That sounds like a delight to make. You should do sugar doing okay? No, the pan is too thin, so it's burning really In a heavier base? Less than 30 minutes on the clock and both teams look to be making good progress. So our marula crumble, we're going to chop our marula nuts and uh, in a pan. We're going to put some butter in there, the nuts, the digestive biscuits which you've crushed, and a bit of sugar. And then we're just going to toast that until it's crunchy and we'll use that as our crumble. My mouth is watering. You see, I am a dessert person myself. One is a teaser, so we can taste it and see if we mess it up. Okay. The blue team has prepared a fifth portion for tasting. Yum! 25 minutes to go. 25 minutes to go. The ants begin plating while Taff gets a gorgeous red flame going in the blue kitchen. Tony gets their chocolate lava cake into the oven for baking. Musodzi also puts in their pears at the same time. This is close!
many trying to use telepathy to check if their lava cakes are nearing completion. Whilst Musozi practices her ice cream whispering techniques to get their ice cream finished. 18 minutes to go. Sixteen minutes to go. Sixteen minutes to go. So is it going any faster? Are you watching that oven? No. <laughs> We're just praying, saying a little prayer to the oven. What's your prayer? Do you want to just say the prayer for us? <laughs> As Musozi prays to the oven for compliance, Tony and Ant give their lava cakes instructions through the oven door. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Not a huge component of your dish? It's just the garnish. garnish. After baking, we're going to allow it to cool for about 5 to 10 minutes. Thereafter, we take it out and, and plate it. Garnish and plate it. Garnish and plate it, yeah. Another attempt? Different different style? Yeah, that didn't work with the style. Oh, to the to the beast prefer, yeah. It's time. Does it up? Yeah. Blue team is finally plating. Four and a half minutes to go. With less than five minutes on the clock, the red team is left waiting on their pairs in order to finish plating. One minute. These are looking great. 30 seconds, guys. Five, four, three, two, one. Blue team now present their final dish of the season, a chocolate orange lava cake. Blue team's dessert was, was okay. The guys have come from very far and they've done a splendid job to this level, but I think they could have done better. The dessert, too safe. Simple on the plate, um, good flavors. But for the final, not enough skill. Did they do enough? No, definitely not for the finals. Uh, very simple. It tasted great. The red team hoped to impress with their individual pear and rum tate taton with eggless avocado ice cream on a marula nut crumb with sugar floss and mixed berry coulis. Do you think they lived up to expectation for a final? Definitely. 
for me they did. Um, it's what I was expecting. Uh, their flavors worked. I was very excited about the Avo ice cream. Unfortunately, it didn't set. Wow, what a splendid uh, approach. They took all the risks. They came out blazing. Just the ice cream didn't come out right. They put in a lot of work. You know, it's mainly the whole of the pastry section on a plate. Good flavors, good textures, but tiny mistakes. Cooley left the seeds in. They get stuck between your teeth. Mm. Not nice. But generally, happy with it. 35 minutes for a starter, 45 minutes for a main course, and 45 minutes for the dessert. The ants took on the buffaloes in the final of the Battle of the Chefs in Harare. The winner of the Battle of the Chefs, season one, Harare, the buffaloes. Wow, incredible! A whopping, well-deserved victory to the Buffaloes. There you have it, the winners of Battle of the Chefs Season 1 Harare. Guys, thank you very much. And you have been an amazing team to have had on the set. I think everyone enjoyed your company. You, you certainly brought a lot of laughter to us. And we weren't laughing at you, we were laughing with you. And we, will, we certainly appreciate that very, very much and for the amount of hard work that you've put in. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. I'm proud of you guys, hey? Thank you very really. much. You didn't, um, you didn't hold back. <laughs> you know, I think that's what I'm, I'm really proud of. You know. How does it feel? You know, I don't even know. My heart is still racing a bit, hey? <laughs> um, you know, some of us are not very expressive, but inside their yeah, cartwheels and especially good to win especially because of the competition yes mm. because of the experience and it's humbling actually so very happy very happy now you almost ended up here by accident isn't it because you were asked by somebody else to come yep. someone applied <laughs> what's her name again Terry Terry. <laughs> and she chickened out <laughs> Right? She did. And then, how did you find Tap? Well, we're related. Okay. <laughs> Through marriage, so... Oh, really? Yes. His, oh, his wife is my aunt. Okay. So, family all behind you? 100%. Yeah? <laughs> were they expecting you to come home today with the news or have you WhatsApp them already? No, like no. really, like... <laughs> I'm like waiting for this to be done. So. <laughs> I switched on my phone before and it was all oh, the weight is killing us. Well, how far? How did you win? Like, uh, I don't know. Pick falls? The competition is extremely stiff right from the from the beginning. I uh, was there a few a few weeks ago and they're very, very serious about their food. How are you going to prepare? Well, Keep practicing. We haven't met the <laughs> so until they meet us and defeat us, we 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 are the champions. <laughs>